Well, good morning, everybody. And first, I'm going to start off today looking at last week's drop monitor. The new one will be released in about an hour after I record this. And I'll be anxious to see what the new data look like because we have seen uh, some decent rains as of late that could eat into the fact that right now we still have over 84% of the lower 48 in some form of drought. And that, again, goes from D0 drought, which is abnormally dry, all the way to the extreme drought that we can see, for example, in parts of Kansas and Oklahoma and then back into California. Now, over the last seven days, this is what precipitation has recently come in and so this should start to eat away at that total drought area and just thinking about the drought that is still very much anchored over the west I think my favorite graphic to show you this morning is this one it's the latest ECMWF forecast for total snowfall uh, going over the next seven days so the Pacific Jet is just set up to deliver multiple systems from uh, today all the way through about next Wednesday and as a result, parts of the Cascades and Northern Rockies, and take a look at the Sierra Nevada here, we could be picking up several inches of snow. Uh, there's the possibility of three to five inches of rain in and along the Willamette Valley, and, and this is just going to be a setup that's really going to deliver a lot of a deep moisture, and it's going to get into the mountains. Now, there are always places that are missed in the west due to the rain shadow effect, and we can certainly see that in parts of the Columbia Basin and the Snake River Valley. But we'll take a look at the total precipitation in just a few moments. But I just like to see this. Outside of this, we do have a snow track. It's not on my map here, but it extends through the Canadian prairie as well. Some very heavy snow there, but my colleague uh, Andrew Pritchard covers that in his daily reports. So let's go take a look at it. This is the jet stream setup, and it is still very much uh, ripping across the, the North Pacific. There'll be a break that's going to show up about a week from now for the Pacific Northwest, but uh, it, it will come back. Uh, we're not really losing the overall signal that has prompted this uh, uh, fast jet stream flow. But the big feature, I think, if you're not in the West, is this feature right here that's cutting through the four corner states. This is a very uh, sharp trough. It's got a positive tilt to it, and it's going to quickly become negative, which means right now it leans in this direction. But what's going to happen is it's going to get pulled in that direction toward uh, the Great Lakes, which means it'll end up shifting like this. So what that means is the system's going to lift over this larger ridge that's kind of anchored here over the um, you know, the Gulf of Mexico extending into the southeast. But take a look. The upper level winds are kind of screaming out of this direction late this afternoon and this evening. And as we step this down, though, to show you what the surface level winds, or the, at least the low level winds about uh, between the surface and about a mile above our heads, this is the all the moisture transport out of the Gulf. So if the upper level flow is coming like that, and the low level flow is coming like this, we have a pretty highly sheared environment that's going to have plenty of moisture to kind of really just uh, develop some, some stronger storms. So we're looking right now at today's convective outlook. We're going to see possibly very late tonight storms erupting here in parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. And then going into tomorrow, the Storm Prediction Center has now enlarged the area in parts of Texas, Oklahoma, getting into um, Arkansas and Louisiana where they've put in an enhanced risk. And what I'm concerned about is a very large frontal squall line that's going to move through this area. So let's go have a look at it. This is the high-res NAM run from early this morning, and we've been seeing some of the snow already spreading in parts of the Four Corner States up to parts of Wyoming, where there are winter weather advisories and winter storm watches out for these areas. So as we play through the middle of today, and then get into tonight. So you see already by 8 o'clock the model's not yet resolving storms erupting here, although the setup is good. The flow is coming, the storm system's ejecting. So when do those storms start to show up? It may be pretty late. Um, this is, you know, uh, after midnight is a possibility and you can see them right in through here. Now some of the snow will get off of the Rocky Mountains into uh, the plains of Colorado and the models are kind of hinting at the possibility overnight for maybe a little bit of ice uh, out of this as well. But what I'll be watching is tomorrow morning, getting into midday tomorrow, two things, okay? This is where we see by tomorrow afternoon. Uh, the setup really beginning to tap into the marginal instability we do have, but the highly shared environment producing uh, the risk for these severe storms. We'll already have seen some of that rain move through Kansas, and that's been the biggest disappointment in each of these new forecasts. The speed of this wave, how open it is coming through the four corner states right now, has just really started to work any sense of heavier rainfall farther to the east in Kansas, not returning it to the heart of winter wheat belt. And so we'll keep an eye on this as it moves basically from eastern Texas straight through Missouri, Illinois, Iowa, and Wisconsin. But before we get into that, take a look at what's already pushing into the Pacific Northwest. That flow is coming in just like this. We're expecting very strong winds. In fact, I was looking at National Weather Service out of Portland this morning. They are talking about wind speeds 40 to 90 miles an hour. The 90 miles an hour will be up in the mountains. 
but maybe uh, several inches of rainfall getting picked up here while there's snow in the central Rockies. So let's get into Friday night. And what we're going to watch is there's the strong onshore flow. There's the large frontal squall line I was telling you about. And that's going to just push overnight on Friday straight over toward the Mississippi River. Now, if you live in parts of Iowa or possibly even sections of uh, um, Nebraska, we might have a changeover briefly to some light snow. Can you see the blues mixed in there? It's been in the last few model runs. I'm not confident in knowing where it's going to be or if it's even going to amount to much, but there could just be a little bit of snow on the backside of this because there is a sharp drop in temperatures following this, but don't get too used to that. It's going to really move around quite quickly. So this gets us out to midday Saturday. From here, I want to show you the latest forecast from the WPC on total precipitation through the next seven days. So primarily, this is the corridor through which we're seeing the heaviest rainfall. The ridge is keeping things drier in the southeast. And then there's two, you know, the system was too quick to deliver a lot of that moisture like we wanted it to from parts of the northern plains to the western plains down into Texas. But certainly strong onshore flow into California. I mean, you already saw the snowfall totals and what's coming into the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies. This is great just to see this moisture returning to this area. There's another feature to watch, and it's here. It's this cutoff low that's north of the Bahamas. It's going to try to bring in some moisture late into the southeast and along the east coast. So to see that, let's go quickly over to the European model. So we've already seen through Saturday. This is Saturday midday. So our first low is now moving over the Great Lakes. The front cuts all the way down through the Mid-South uh, in Tennessee and, and in Kentucky and down toward Mississippi. So that one's out. A new system rolls through the Canadian Prairie, some heavy snow, but watch this guy right here. This is Sunday. That low dives into the Pacific Northwest and actually splits into two pieces. One that comes out here into the North Central Plains and a second that just continues to deliver strong onshore flow into the northern California mountains here, the Klamath Mountains through the Sierra Nevada. And what we're going to see is there could be a wave that quickly runs through, you know, Montana uh, and, and Wyoming and then gets over here to Ontario. Some storms are likely in this corridor midweek next week, but the depth of that trough sweeping through here, it's, it's a big one. Now, <clears throat> that's when that upper level low is kind of moving some of its precip into this area, but we're really going to see the rain from that showing up in the week two time frame right in through here. Now you do notice that in the week two forecast for precipitation anomalies, we have a bit of a drier trend the last couple of days in the northwest. That's because of the, the jet stream position is going to favor better moisture coming into California in week two, but it doesn't mean that we're going to just go over all dry for the rest of the month. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing late tonight the newest update from the ECMWF long range. By the way, I won't get home tonight off my flights till about midnight, uh, so uh, I might not be able to release the long range outlook until the morning, just depending on what my drive home from Chicago looks like. But you got your week one versus your week two. Now, temperatures in South America will wrap this up. I love these maps from Penn State, just looking at the 24-hour temperature change. So you can very clearly find where the front already is with the coldest air. But watch this forecast for how cold things are going to stay in Montana going forward. So here is the seven-day outlook on temperatures. Today, again, another hot day in the upper Midwest and parts of the Midwest. But then you get into Friday. And Saturday, that warmer air pushes east. We got a quick rebound in temperatures here in the northern plains. But look at this. By Sunday, high temperatures in the 20s. Monday, right in through here, they're going to struggle to get out of the teens. And then if you get into Tuesday, the high temperatures in Montana, we're having a high temperature of 11 degrees right here. But mostly through this pattern, we keep recovering warmer conditions across the eastern half of the United States while the troughs stay anchored west. We can see that going out November 7th to the 11th, look how cold this will be from British Columbia through the Canadian Prairie into Montana. But then notice that by the, um, the day 5 through 10 forecast, which gets us through mid-month, there will be a push at that point to kind of make the jet stream a bit more zonal, pushing more of that colder air farther to the east. So we'll keep a close eye on how that temperature pattern evolves. Lastly, in today's report, I do discuss um, the latest update from NOAA on its outlook for November. And we'll cover this again in the in-depth report, which, again, I might release on Friday morning, given how late I'll get in. And this is also going to be an interesting topic to discuss. That cold front we talked about all week coming through South America has now moved far enough to the north that it's over the Amazon. And what you're going to watch here is a one-week sliding window of precipitation only. So it's a seven-day sliding window. And if I take it out to where it's just fully into week two, we actually see better rains. This has been a, an important trend in ECMWF, but better rains 
in central and southern Brazil, in Paraguay, and also in Argentina. And you know we've been discussing this quite a bit. Argentina's locked into a pretty uh, tough drought for the most part, so it's good to see some moisture returning to that area. All right, we will uh, keep watching it, and I'll talk to you again in my in-depth report, maybe late tonight, but likely tomorrow morning, and uh, we'll finish out this week uh, with the uh, latest long-range updates. So I appreciate it. Thanks.